Hey friends, I'm Slikay, and today I want to teach you how to create some beautiful animations all in Figma using interactive components. So we're going to build something that looks a little bit like this. Now, of course, we can do something similar using the sort of regular after delay animation trigger in Figma, but using interactive components allows us to stagger things with a little bit more control. So we don't have to wait for one animation to finish before the next one can start. All of these separate animations can happen at the same time with their own sets of delays. But before we jump in, you can follow the link down below to my Patreon, where for $5 a month, you can get access to all of my files, whether they're Notion, Figma, Webflow, or code. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first step that I usually take when I'm creating something like this is to start ideating on the kind of animation that we want to do. And so what I'll usually do is I'll grab my iPad, I'll grab my Apple Pencil, and I'll jump into Fig Jam. And hopefully, as you can see here, I have kind of like a really crappy sketch of my design. Uh, you can see we have that text. We have these trees on the side, on the left and the right. If I unlock them, we can move them around. We have these trees that are going to come in from the left and the right and some other elements in the frame. And so you can kind of see here that I started ideating on things. I have all my elements drawn in with a sort of like a black marker, and then I'm annotating my animation using uh, red arrows. So you can see I'm thinking of having the text kind of slide in uh, in a staggered order. We have the trees that move in, as well as the whole thing kind of zooming out uh, in a way that kind of creates an effect of a dolly, like a camera dolly that's moving out or pushing into a scene. So after throwing some ideas down in Fig Jam, it's time to move on to the actual animation. So what I'm going to show you right now is kind of the basics of how this concept works and we'll get that kind of zooming effect that we want. And hopefully you can take away from this uh, the core concepts that help you build animations like this without ever having to leave Figma. OK, so the first step is to start breaking down the animation. Now, I'm going to start by animating the text and I know that I want my text to be animated over three lines. So I'm just going to create a copy of it and I'm going to actually make three separate copies of it and split this up into each individual line. You can split this up by word, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to do it on every line. So now that we have our three pieces of text, hopefully you can kind of see in the animation, if I play this again, that the text isn't just fading in, it's sort of being cropped. There's sort of like a bottom of where it's visible and it's being cropped from that bottom. So it's kind of sliding in from outside of a frame. So the way that we do this is we're going to go ahead and wrap each of these pieces of text into a frame. We're going to select a piece of text, hit command option G on your keyboard, and that's going to wrap it in a frame. Now let's rename this animate welcome. And this is just going to help us understand that the components that we're going to create uh, are used specifically for animation. So let's do this for every piece of text here. And now if I select all of my frames, we can hit clip content and you'll see that some of the text is getting cut out. So just to kind of illustrate the idea of what we're trying to do is we're trying to have our text start down beneath the edge of this frame and then kind of slide into position. So let's put our text at the position that we want it to end up at. This is our final keyframe. Move it down a little bit so that none of it is getting cut off and it's kind of in the middle of this frame. And I'll just repeat it for each of these pieces of text. Okay, looks good. And then jungle. Because it's got that G, it's getting cut off a little bit. So I'm just going to extend the size of this frame, make it a little bit taller. And then we have our text in the middle. None of it's getting cut off and we're good to go. So the next step, I mentioned that this is our final keyframe. So we're going to have a starting keyframe, which is keyframe number one, and a final keyframe, which is keyframe number two. And so I'm just going to hit command R to open the rename panel. And I'm going to do dollar sign and, which is going to give us the current name, slash two because this is our second keyframe. Then we'll duplicate all of these, hit Command R again, and I'm gonna match three. So it's gonna take three and replace it with one. And now we see we have welcome one, welcome two, two the one, two, jungle one, jungle two. So the next step to make all of this work is to take all of these pieces of text inside that animate frame, inside that first keyframe, and move them down to where we can't see them anymore. So I'll just move all of these down together to make sure that they come from kind of a similar position. We'll grab all of these and move them down until we can't see any of them anymore. Now, the last step to make this animation work on the text is to go ahead, grab both of these, create a component set. I'm going to rename this property one to keyframe 
and we'll repeat for each of these. Now that we've created our component sets, this is where the magic starts to happen. So at this point, having two variants of the same component, we can start to animate them using interactive components. So if I hit Shift-E, we'll go to the Prototype tab, and I can connect my keyframe 1 to keyframe 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that after a delay of 2350 milliseconds, and I know this because I've already set up this animation ahead of time, after a delay of 2350 milliseconds, we want to go from keyframe 1 to keyframe 2. We want this to happen over 1000 milliseconds. Then we're going to use this animation curve here. So we'll take this Bezier value, paste it in here. Okay. Now the beauty of using interactive components is again, that I don't have to wait for this animation to complete before I can start animating the next piece of text, right? We're not chaining animations back to back. They're all happening at their own specific delay. So what I can do is I can go to the second piece of text and I can create the same type of animation. So after delay, go to keyframe two, thousand milliseconds using this Bezier curve but the delay is going to be 2,500 milliseconds. So 150 milliseconds after this first one starts, we'll start the second animation. And so these two animations are starting at slightly different times, but they're also happening at the same time. They're not happening one after another, they're happening together. Let's repeat this for jungle, so same thing. After a delay of 2,650, we're staggering them all by 150 milliseconds. We want this animation to happen. Perfect. Now from here, just to keep things a little bit tidy, I'm going to uh, hit Shift A, wrap these in a frame, call it Animate. And again, to keep things tidy, I'm just going to pull in this header and we'll pop it up top here. And that just helps us and other people who work with us in our file know what these components are here for. Now let's keep the final design on the side as a reference and duplicate it. And we're going to call this Animated Design. And what we want to do is replace this original text with our new animated text. So let's grab this, pull it out and we'll grab each of these final keyframes up here. We'll do Shift A to wrap them in an auto layout frame. And remember, every time you hit Shift A, you wanna hit Command R right after. So we'll do Shift A, Command R. We'll rename this to Hero Text. And obviously the spacing between these is a little bit too extreme, so we'll probably take it down to just zero. And that's looking pretty close. And you can even put this right above the other text just to double check that your spacing and sizing is accurate. And you can see here it's pretty damn close. So let's go ahead and take this here text. I'm going to Command X to cut it, select our text in here, and I'm going to hit Command Option Shift V to replace. And you can see that it moved down a little bit because of what we were doing, again, to get those frames to cut out. So we'll just move it up by, you know, 24 pixels. and. You know, that looks pretty accurate. And now we're gonna take all of our pieces of text and take them back to our first keyframe. We'll hit Shift E to go into the prototype tab. And we'll just create a flow starting point here called animation. And if we hit play, see that after a little bit of a delay, our text is gonna slide in nicely the way that we want it to. So you can see that the animation is kind of staggered, but these are all happening in a sequence they're not happening one after the other. They're happening together as a smooth, fluid animation. So that's really the core concept of how this works. Now let's apply it to some other elements on the screen to make this animation a little bit more robust and to really take advantage of the amazing power of interactive components. So what I want to animate next is the trees. So if we go back to our ideation in Fig Jam, I want to create a sort of dolly effect. We're moving a camera almost out of the screen in 3D space. The background is moving, there's foreground elements that are moving, and we're creating a real sense of depth in this landing page hero. So now we're just going to animate the trees on the side. We're going to create that zoom out camera move using interactive components. So I'm going to take my trees here on the left. We have this forest left layer, and I'm going to duplicate and make sure to leave all your layers intact while you're creating these animations so that you can just go back in and replace those layers later. Once we have our element pulled out, we can follow the same series of steps to create the animation. So command option G to wrap it in a frame. We'll name it animate trees left slash two because this is our second and final keyframe. We'll go ahead and duplicate this and name it slash one because it's our first keyframe. And I know that I want to move this out of the frame by negative 368 pixels. We'll click content just so we can kind of tell what's going on in the animation. 
And once again, select both of them, create a component set, rename this to keyframe, and we'll hit Shift D to be able to connect these using our after delay smart animate. Now I want these to come in or to start animating a little bit before our text. So I'm gonna set a delay of 2200 milliseconds. I'm gonna set a slightly different animation. So the duration is gonna be 2000 milliseconds. So it's twice as slow as the text animation. And we're using a slightly more gentle ease out curve. Let's repeat the same step for the trees on the right. So again, I'll duplicate it, wrap it in a frame called animate trees right slash two duplicate it this is frame number one and i want to move this out of the way by 368 pixels and again just to see what's happening we'll clip the content create a new component set and link the two of these up with smart animate and we're going to use the same delay these are both part of the same camera move we're sort of trying to sell the illusion that we're moving out through 3d space so we want to have the same animation uh, the same delay the same duration and the same curve once these are created i'm going to go ahead and add them to our uh, text here and i'm going to put them actually in order of when they come in and using keyframe 2 we'll hit command c to copy it command option shift v to replace do the same thing for my tree on the right and then make sure that we set these to the first keyframe our starting keyframe and if we go ahead and preview our animation you'll see that everything kind of moves in we have this slow move as the text is appearing and now the one final thing we want to do to sell this camera move is to have the background zoom out a little bit. So let's go ahead and lock these layers just so that they're not getting in the way. And once again, we're just following the same kind of concept here. We'll grab this background image, wrap it in a frame, animate background slash two, and then duplicate it to create our first keyframe. And because we're zooming out, we want the image in the first keyframe to be a little bit larger. So let's go up to um, sort of like 18, 1838 should be good. And again, just to keep everything making sense, we'll clip the content. So you can kind of see what's happening here. We have this image that's a little bit more zoomed in and it moves into this zoomed out version. Let's animate between the two. And again, this is part of the same move. So we want to have the same delay as the trees, 2200, same duration and same animation curve. And finally, We'll pop it in here to keep everything nice and tidy. And we'll go ahead and replace our background with this new frame. Now, if we preview it one last time, you'll see that we're really selling this kind of zoom effect as if we're moving through the forest. So that's the core concept of how this all works. And hopefully you can take this away and maybe create this loader animation that we saw earlier. So if we play it again, you can see the loader animation. We have our text coming in. We have a frame that moves out of the way. And now that core animation that we've just built together is happening nice and smoothly using our interactive components. All right, that's it for today. I really hope you learned something. If you liked the video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe. That way you get notified when I upload new videos. And if you want any of these working files, you can check the link in the description to go to my Patreon where I'll have all my working files for Notion, Figma, Webflow, and all my code tutorials as well. Thank you again for watching and happy designing.